And we are live in the present tense with Sam Stewart at 91.7 FM, WNJR Washington, and online at WNJR.org. Folks, what's going on? We've got just a few shows left on this season of the present tense. Last time on the show, I was joined by Angelo Fertini and Tanner Volpatti. That was a lot of fun. Learned about, about a lot about football, a lot about life as well. We've got a great show returning to the studio tonight. My guest on the show tonight returns to the studio for his third appearance on the present tense after previously joining episodes 45 and 54 of the show. As captain of this year's golf squad, this guest was an all-pack first team player and helped to lead the presidents to their first pack title since 2018. 2019. Everyone, welcome on the show tonight. Colin Robinson. Colin, how are you doing tonight? Doing fantastic. It's good to be back and, uh, you know, excited to kind of go out on a bit. Yeah, I'm excited to have you back and, yeah, I'm really looking forward to discussing this pack title and some things about your golf game as well. So let's go ahead and start with this pack title. First pack title since 2018, 2019. I remember last year you talked about you couldn't quite give it at home to get that title last year and it seemed like everything just came together for you guys. You guys were in third coming in this weekend, and you took home the title. So let me just ask you, first off, Colin, how does it feel to take home the pack title as a senior? Well, it feels great. Uh, I mean, it, it's been a heck of a career here at WNJ. Obviously, we haven't won since 2019, which was my freshman year, and that was kind of when COVID kicked it off. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in first place and had one more round to go. So uh, that kind of stunk not being able to go playing the NCAA tournament. Uh, but this year, especially after the last two years, of kind of disappointment not being able to get over that hump. It, it feels really good and just a great team. Uh, just a heck of a team, honestly. Yeah. Wait, so, so you said, I don't think you ever told me a story. In COVID, you guys had one round left to go? Yeah, so we played, we, it used to be two rounds in the fall and mm -hmm. then one round in the spring, but now it's two and two. two right. Um, so we completed both rounds in the fall and had a pretty decent lead from what I remember. Um, and then obviously March came around and kind of, you know, yeah. undid all that. Work. March 2020. But well, we still got a pack championship out of it, so yeah. that wasn't okay. too bad. But it's, awesome. it's definitely going to be awesome going to down to Kentucky and playing this national yeah, championship. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And I'm sure all that... Yeah, the close, close losses these past couple of years, and then that with COVID's just got to make this one even more special. Oh, real sweet. It's, I mean, especially the, the team's awesome. Uh, we all work real hard, and it's just good to kind of see, you know, I mean, everyone kind of contribute what they needed to contribute mm -hmm. to get to where we needed to be. And uh, it's just, it's like you're saying, it's just like something I can't even really describe. It's awesome. just sinking in still. Now for you, you guys were third coming into this pack tournament. You know, in a way, the odds are kind of stacked against you guys. Third place is, you know, it's a decent lead in, in golf to be to overtake two teams in a weekend. And for you, what was your message to the guy as captain going into this weekend? Yeah, um, I mean, I, uh, golf's kind of one of those weird sports where I mean, you could be down thirty strokes and you just kind of get hot and you can catch some teams. But uh, I mean, our conference is pretty great. Uh, Westminster has won back-to-back pack -back titles. Yeah, and we just, five straight in the women's game. Yeah, they're, they're real dominant. They have been real dominant, I should say. Um, and then also, <laughs> uh, uh, we also added another team, Allegheny College, uh, who came from a great conference. They have a bunch of really good players. Yeah. Um, so just not to expect too much, just go out there and play your own game. Um, and kind of let the, the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just happened to be that uh, after our 36 holes, we uh, took it home by one, which, I mean, coming back is- yeah. What about Platt sinking for par on the la the clutch par on the last hole? Yeah, um, he actually, we were watching and he missed like a, a three footer on the previous hole, which would have been, you know, that nice little two shot cushion mm -hmm. going into 18. But uh, I mean, as a freshman, just stepping up and kind of, not letting that moment blind him. And uh, I mean, he had two great shots on 18, and then, I mean, he can roll the rock just about as good as Roll, anyone. roll the rock, I never thought about that. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, But yeah, I mean, I, as soon as I he put it on in two, I knew it was basically a guaranteed two foot. I mean, that kid, he's made of steel. And actually, um, the kid from Allegheny was on the 18th hole, he had probably like a 60 footer and almost dropped it in I probably left it on like maybe an inch short mm. so the heart was bumping a little bit there <laughs> because then he would have needed to make that putt or else we would have 
ultimate he'll be tied and lost in a tiebreaker. Oh, okay, so there's um, not over, like, uh, I'm sorry, extra holes. No, it goes to the, so four people count and you bring five guys, so then the tiebreaker goes to the fifth score. So I think we would have lost that by like two strokes, which would have been real heartbreaking. But, yeah, uh, but hey, it didn't happen and he came up to the that's awesome. Anymore. Now, one thing we had Cade Patterson on in the fall and he was, you know, a big part of your team this year. And one thing he said to me in the hallway of New Reds one time, he said, Dude, we are not playing, because this is when I first met him, he's like, we're not playing to what we could be right now. You guys ripped off four in a row. What changed with the mindset team from the fall? Because it's not like you guys had a terrible fall, but what made you guys kick it in sort of this new gear? Because I feel like the team would really just fire all cylinders by the time the end of the year hit. Yeah, I mean, I think our expectations might have been a little too high. Our first tournament of the year, we went out there and shot some really good scores, and we're like, holy cow, we're going to – we're gonna really probably challenge for a national title from the beginning of the year, even with a few freshmen and obviously the incoming transfers. Uh, I mean, Cade's an absolute stud. Can't can't take that away from him. But uh, I mean, it, I think we just kind of sat back and relaxed a little bit more, kind of trusted in the process. Mm. Uh, we had some great work down in Myrtle Beach uh, during spring break and a few tournaments to kind of ramp it up uh and then from there it was just game on and i mean as sports go you just kind of need a few things to fall your way i mean there's a few tournaments where we didn't really play our best but uh at the end of the day when the scores were tallied up we still we still won so like i mean that's all you can really ask for a win's a win at the end of the day even if you don't play your best uh and it just boosts your confidence. Once you win one, it's so much easier to win another, mm. uh, especially in golf when you're so used to losing. It just kind of boosts that confidence and makes you kind of sit back and be like, all right, I'm doing the right thing. When you say so, lose, so used to losing, and like, well, what? I mean, there's only one guy who wins, right? Mm. Or I mean, one team technically in mm. our sport because it's more of a team sport, but I mean, golf, there could be 172 players in the field that week and there's only one guy who's right. gonna raise the trophy with the lowest score so you kind of just get really used to you know thirds a great outcome or whatever but it it really feels great to kind of get over that hump and uh you know polish off a few victories no that's awesome and for you colin <sighs> you've just talked about your relationship with coach club before and how important um he has been to you, mentoring you, you know, working with the team all these years that you've been here, you know, just being that figure who has supported everyone both on and off the golf course. You and Juan and Wags talked about that last time y'all came on. So what did it mean to you to bring Coach Club, who also just won his fifth title as PAC Coach of the Year, a championship in your senior year? What did that feel like to share that moment with him? Yeah, I mean, it's – it's awesome. I mean, I love that guy with all my heart. I mean, he's, he puts in so much work for us, uh, probably more than he should. I mean, he's out there grinding with us from whenever we want to be on the golf course until we ever until we leave, and he'll stay extra, you know, if you need or ask for that help. Um, and I've honestly, I mean, I've seen that I've seen Coach Cluck pretty happy, um, but I I thought we were almost going to bring him to tears, especially mm -hmm. with that comeback. So. It, it really meant a lot, uh, especially when I was getting recruited to come here uh, a little bit later than I would have liked to, you know, be recruited or commit. Um, he was at a national championship where we're playing the national championship coming up. Uh, so it really just meant a lot to kind of be like, coach, you know, we've been here all this time. Mm -hmm. We've been so close. It's been so bittersweet. And then to kind of finally just be like, all right, coach, you know, we finally earned it for you. And we finally, uh, I mean, all that work, hard work that he puts in, that we put in, finally has some reward. How do you feel like your relationship with Coach Clock has changed over these four years? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. Uh, I mean, I always, I mean, he's obviously a mentor of mine. Uh, he's, he's a great guy, but, uh, I feel like it hasn't changed that much. I mean, he's, he's so friendly and so hardworking that right from the beginning, he could kind of see your talent levels and whatever. He, he expects so much out of you. And that's kind of the way I've been my entire life. I, I know I'm capable. 
and he just kind of kept pushing and pushing and pushing, which is something I really like. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just keeps flourishing. I mean, the more, the more you're around him, sure, you might have some ups and downs and you might disagree on a few things or whatever. I mean, golf's such an individual feel sport mm -hmm. that it's, you might clash heads every once in a while. Maybe clash heads isn't the right word, but you might disagree on a few things. But at the end of the day, you realize that you're all here for the same reason. You want to win a pack championship. You want to go to the NCAAs. And uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like we just started to understand each other a lot better, especially if you have four years. And I think that's potentially why we're going on a national championship because he's kind of, yeah. he's figured out, I think we both figured out what, what we both need to put into the relationship mm -hmm. to kind of get the most out of it. Mm. Now this next question, and you kind of reference this in your past point answers, is a national championship down at Nicholsville, Kentucky Keen Trace Golf Club. May 16th tournament opens up and like for you Colin individually and as a team what do you think the biggest keys are to winning a national championship yeah I mean obviously it's going to be hard um I mean that anything in life that you want is not going to be it was easy. easy everyone would do it yeah exactly <laughs> so uh I feel like the biggest keys for us is just staying grounded I mean it, as much as this win feels great I mean there's obviously bigger things that we want to achieve um, individually and as a team as a whole. Um, so just stay grounded, trust the process, know that you belong here. Um, we belong there for a long time and we just couldn't seem to get over that hump. Um, so just, just stay in your own lane, stay in the moment, enjoy it too, because you never know how many times you're gonna be back. Um, and yeah, you know, just put the floor or the pedal in the middle and uh, you know, yeah. see where it goes i mean there's not a whole lot more you can do than yeah. just i mean I that point of year too yeah. i mean it's you know it works so far for y'all guys nothing too big adjustments to make but one point that i want to take back a couple questions ago is you said you felt guys felt like from the first tournament this year you were ready to win a national championship what made this year feel different um i would say the depth uh mm. the depth on our team i mean in the past we've had great teams, don't get me wrong, but it was really a great starting five. And this year with the addition of a few transfers and a bunch of freshmen, which we haven't had a huge freshman class in a while, um, the talent level on our team definitely just ramped up a little bit. And all of a sudden, like our, the four or five guys who aren't starting in tournaments are very capable of starting in tournaments. Mm -hmm. Like we saw, uh, one of our players this week uh, was actually injured. He's usually like our three guy, um, and he's a heck of a player. Uh, couldn't make it out there, so it's just a next man up kind of philosophy. And we knew, I mean, as much as it stinks that we don't have a guy who's been counting all year and, uh, you know, placing real high for us, we, we knew we had trusted all the guys, and we knew they were going to step up and uh, at least do the best. Now, one thing you referenced a lot, and something that I – I'm sure a lot of people at home don't quite understand is that scoring, how college golf is scored. And I just wanted to touch this point. So how does it typically work? So you get four or five guys, but it, are those the only guys that play? Like just for the people at home, how is college golf scored team-wise? Yeah, so um, basically our team, especially, we qualify all the time. So if you're in the top 10 of a previous tournament, you won't need to qualify. You're automatically in the top five spots. As a team or individually? Uh, individually. Okay. So, uh, and then whoever places the best or does the best that week in qualifying scores uh, will go with the rest of the team. And you'll bring five guys to a tournament. And usually, so if it's a two-day tournament, you'll count four scores the first day, and there'll be one drop score, which is the five guy. Um, that just won't count and then the second day completely restarts. So you're back at zero Whoever the top four scores on your team are that mm -hmm. day uh, Count again, so it's it's real exciting because I mean you might not have your best stuff one day But all of a sudden you, you're starting to feel it the next day and you have some hope because you're not out of it I mean you might... so typically I mean There's not really in sports just like a, a maybe you're on the bench or you're like a role player But anyone in golf could be called upon at any time really yeah, yeah, basically, I mean, every single shot you take out there counts towards the team because if there's someone doing worse than you, 
than especially in college golf. I mean, there's only one drop score, so you're you're the next guy up, and if you're not succeeding or playing well, or you're a little mentally out of it, and you've kind of just given up, uh, that doesn't just affect you, but it affects everyone else on the team, and uh, it overall affects the team score. And I think that's also why we ripped off four in a row. I think there's just uh, everyone kind of has confidence in each other. We practice all the time, we play with each other, and we just try and push each other to be the best golfer that we all can be. Wow, that's awesome. I, I love that answer. And I want to ask a little bit, you know, we, we've, I've asked you so many personal questions, Colin, but I do want to ask you this because I saw you play some golf last year, and I, I remember sitting over in Fireside and talking about some things. I remember you said you wanted to work on this year. But for you, how do you feel like, your golf game has changed over these four years, both from the mental and physical side of things? Yeah, I mean, that's tough. Uh, physically, physically, I don't think it's changed too much. Um, I mean, I'm still, I don't really change. I'm same basic <laughs> physical stature that I came in here as a freshman, <laughs> um, which really doesn't mean too much in golf. I mean, obviously hitting the gym yeah, might have helped a little bit for me, but you know, so, I, just, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Is it is it a thing where it does help to lift? Because I remember Juan said he was lifting a little bit, but I've heard some golfers say like they don't want to lift. Like, I know like Tiger Wood, like you know, it, it's interesting to me in golf, and I guess I don't want to sound like I'm speaking too much out, but you have someone like um, is it John Daly who does all the drinking and stuff? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you have this is the video side by side of like Tiger Woods and. He's talking about running five miles, and John is like, I smoke like some cigarettes and you know drink some beer after I go. But like, do you think like physical training does help in golf? Would you say? Yeah, I mean it for sure helps. Um, do you guys do anything as a team physically training? Yeah, so in the off season we do uh, these performance PSTs they're called, um, and they're they were created by Coach Cluck when he wasn't at the school. It's just like the, his own teaching thing that he he thinks will help you in it. Basically, just you know, lengthens your swing, swing uh, helps you just get a little bit more precise in the movements of the golf swing versus lifting, where you're just ripping around heavy weight, mm -hmm. and that might not necessarily help, especially in a game that's so technical and mm -hmm. more of a feel game like golf. So, I mean, sure there are exercises, but I would, you know, I mean, it's like you're hitting a club. Into like, because obviously you've had a great career, and you're saying, yeah, it might have helped to run at the gym, but. Like, I think it's like, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, you've had a great career and I don't know. It's just interesting, like, you, you reflected back on that. But yeah. I yeah, know. I mean, I don't, I shouldn't say, like, I don't work out. And, okay. And, and, but, like, I'm just saying, like, there's, there's kids out there that are gym rats and are golfers. And to me, that just really doesn't make sense because I'm mm -hmm. trying to be as technical as possible. Interesting. Um, so, so it's more like when you say those movements, like, Flexibility, core, is that sort of Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So but I feel like that's still working out in its own way. I mean you might not be like benching or something. I think it's applicable to every sport. Like what you do in baseball is what you do from football, yeah. which is different from lacrosse or cross country, you know what I mean? Versus golf. So I think it's like sports specific movement is very important. Yeah. I, I definitely consider that working out. It might not be like in the gym, but like, Yeah, yeah. I it, mean it's it definitely helps. Uh but for me I just and Coach Cluck is also on the same philosophy, I like to get out there and just get as many repetitions as possible. Yeah. Because if I've seen that I can hit the shot uh, before in practice, I've hit it a million times or whatever it is. Uh, there's just so much more confidence, and I don't have to think about all the bad things that can come into play. I'm only thinking about the great things that are going to happen. Mm. Now, kind of the, the second part of the question and the mental side of things that we changed. Because I remember like. You were pretty fiery from the times I saw you. You were, and to me, just talking this year, you just seem like more comfortable with things. You seem more, maybe that's, you can disagree with me if you want, but like, I feel like you see, I've seen you talk to those guys around school. Like, you seem to have really settled into that leadership role, but in your own words, how would you say you change most mentally? Yeah, I mean, I would say, ment I'm still just as fiery as ever. I know, and I know you are, but. I feel like it just speaking just because I've known you for so long. I feel like you're putting that like towards like the leadership aspect of things now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I I feel like I've got better at controlling when 
to be fiery and when to be angry and you know when to be happy and all that stuff because if you're not enjoying yourself out there you're you really shouldn't be out there mm -hmm. and that's something that it's I mean it takes time especially in golf which is such a mental game right uh, people say it's 90% mental but I just feel like learning how to act in certain situations uh, I've definitely got a little bit better at that I'm not saying I'm you know, the best ever. I mean, I'm still a work in progress as I bet you'd, if, if you'd ask any golfer, they'd say the exact same thing. Um, but yeah, I've just kind of channeled the mental energy to be more focused and less negative towards myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I, I will get a little angry if I do something stupid out there, but for the most part, it's 10 seconds of, you know, frustration and then Put a smile back on your face. You're on a golf course instead of in the classroom. I mean, who can really? That's one thing you said. We're listening back to the clips. That's one thing you talked about. Yeah, I mean, so you, you got to understand where you are. I mean, there's not a whole lot I'd rather be doing than mm -hmm. golfing. So put a smile back on your face because if if you're out there beating yourself up consistently, and I've done this multiple times, even it's happened this year. If you're just beating up on yourself, you're you're not gonna play your best golf because you're just limiting yourself so much mm -hmm. and you're so in your own head that you can't you can't achieve what you know you can achieve. Um, and it's just it's something that takes a lot of time to uh, to understand, but it's it's something that every golfer. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I feel like in every sport, every yeah, for sure. Ever. But I feel like, and uh, that's why I love talking to golfers, just the mental side of things. I mean, I had Luke Molesco on earlier this season, the present tense, and I'm having uh, Andrew and, um, um, I'm completely blanking right now, LASIK on uh, Thursday, or I'm sorry, next Thursday. And I feel like just getting to hear, because it's really, uh, it's, it's like baseball in the sense you only get limited chances, but you get even less chances than baseball. Like you get, you might have two or three at bats in a game. Like for each hole, you get if you if you mess up that first shot, you know what I mean. I'm sure you know. Like if you put yourself in a bad position, it's yeah, it's tough. Kind of, it's tough. It's so, kind of game over. I mean, from there, I mean, oh, really? not necessarily game over, but if especially if you're not like mentally strong and you do one silly thing, that's all you're gonna think about for the rest mm -hmm. of the round. Instead of snapping out of it and knowing that you can trust the process, you know, get back into your own mental state and just go out there and do what you need to do and what you've done your entire life. Now, Colin, my next question for you, your quote of the day on your first time on the show was no matter how good you are, you can always get better from Tiger Woods. Yeah. Yes, correct. <laughs> now, listen to that. You're one of the most motivated people I know. You're you're a fiery guy. You really work hard. So for you, what motivates you, Colin? That's a real tough question. I'm um, here to ask the tough questions. Yeah, I mean, I would say a motivation definitely for the season is just knowing our potential and all these great mm -hmm. kids on the golf team and uh, I mean, obviously being in a leadership role, not wanting to let them down and, you know, see you at a low point or, um, you know, just, you, you kind of want to always be the front runner of the team. Um, I, I would say my biggest motivator is myself, um, which probably not a great answer. No, I think it's... I, in golf, I mean, it's so, it's so individual that I know, I know what I'm capable of and I know, I mean, like I'll watch professional golf and be like, oh, I could do that. Realistically, probably can't right now. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's there's something inside of me that just wants to keep going. Um, and I think that's every golfer. Every, I mean, at least every golfer that's committed to the game. They just sure. know that, I mean, if you're not motivated by your own golf game and your own thoughts, uh, you're pretty much not gonna make it anywhere because there's no one else is going to really be pushing you, unless you're on a great golf team like Doug and Jay. But. Now, one thing that I've kind of thought about recently, and this might be a hot take when it comes to sports in general, is that I think you have to play for yourself because that's how the team gets better. And if you need a why because of someone else who 
you're doing it for you step that wide that's not what you think of quitting but at the end of the day i think you have to do it for yourself you have to do it and be the best player you can be because i want to be the best i can yeah because i want to be the star player because if everyone has that mindset it's just going to make the team better you exactly. know what i mean like, at the end of the day like i think everyone should want to play for the coach and want to play for their teammates but i think you should want to play for yourself most yeah if you're if you're out there and there's you're not the number one reason that you're out there and it's someone else pushing you into I agree this. I mean you're probably not right. going to succeed because you're just not going to work that hard um, right and I just, think and even think about now it's like I, I had a high school coach my first two years and he was like you have to have a reason why you can't be just be yourself and I, I thought it was always how dumb how he said that I mean, he wasn't a great coach in general but uh, <laughs> like I think that even your why, when you want to, like, you have to go back to that little kid, the high school that put in hours, the teenager that put in hours, the college kid who's got out of class and go to the course or the field or the court. Like, I think at the end of the day, like, and there's, there's people who might disagree, but what I got to say is this, essentially, you have to be the reason you're doing it because at the college level, if you're not doing it because you still love it because you want to prove yourself deep down, I think I'll just chew you up this video out. Well, yeah, I was going to, you kind of just hit it right on the nose. I was <laughs> going to say, if you don't love what you're doing, you're, you're yeah. probably... Yeah, and this is an interesting point. And go, go ahead, were you going to finish? Yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to kind of continue and just say, you're not in it for the right reasons. Right. I mean, if, if you don't love what you're doing, go find something else you love and that you're very passionate about because right. you're half in it, half out of it. Right. And there's no way you're gonna succeed or be fully uh, mentally into it if if you're I agree. into it. And, and some things I think about like with, you know, I think at this point in our, in our season, I'm sure your season as well, I mean, college baseball, 40 game season, like everyone's like, you know, your knees are hurting, your shoulders, everything's hurting in baseball at this time of year, you know, you're a little sore. But I think, and you know, you have to get up at 6 a.m. for road trips and on the bus and practice and the cold and the hot. And you never know what's that, what that day is going to be around here. But I think at the end of the day, if it's not you motivating yourself to get out of bed at 6 a.m. to get to the bus by 6.30, it, all the motivational quotes in the world, all the quote of the days, all the YouTube videos, like, I think at the end of the day, it has to come from you because you want to be the best player you can be. You yeah, that's to resonate, right? I mean, there's no way. no matter how motivational a coach is or a best friend or a team if you're laying a bit they're not gonna get you out of the bed you have to get out of the bed yeah, yourself absolutely you have to get to practice when you're tired when you're sick you know what I mean? yeah when you're hurting when you don't feel 100 percent. yeah i mean there's if what you do doesn't resonate i mean there's not gonna be a whole lot of help around you i mean you're you're your biggest cheerleader that's something that i've always learned is if, or at least if you're not your biggest cheerleader, you probably should figure out how to become your biggest cheerleader. Mm. Because it's, if you don't believe in yourself and if you don't love what you're doing, there's not a, a whole lot of extra path for you to go down. Mm. Extra path. Mm, I like that. I like that. Talk about you get deep out here tonight. I think it, it, it seems like such a small thing. But when you believe you're going to do well, it's the power of it is so immense because I've had days and I try to share my experience about when I fail and when I do good out, out there as well but like for instance today like I'm, I'm I'm really trying to you know get back in the rotation like I, I threw the fastball really well today and struck a couple guys out like I'm just pounding and then my coach is like I gotta see you throw that curveball change up for strike and I'm just like I don't buy like right now I gotta get back to that point where I can believe in it because my freshman year I, I basically couldn't throw anything for strike I had a bad case of the, what do you call the yips so I really I had to learn to throw a baseball again so Fastball is feeling good right now, but now we got to take care of this. And like, I feel like the difference between those two pitches right now is like fastball. I'm like, all right, here hit it. You're not gonna hit this. Versus curveball change. I'm like, I gotta put it in the right spot. And if, if here's another thing, and you can think about comment on this too. Just I feel like the two games are so similar. In baseball, if you're thinking mechanically when it's time to go, you're done. Yeah, you might as well just not tee it up in golf. I, I can because if you're like, I gotta keep my elbow here. I gotta keep it. Like you gotta just throw and try to make the little adjustments because like if you think, okay, here today, I'm gonna try to think about this when I'm out there. Like, I just don't think it works in field sports. Cause yeah. that, you know, it, now in like football or whatever, it might be different. Like, I wanna do this route or depends on the sport, but like in field sports, 
He yeah, kind of I've always, I've always, I mean, golf is a little bit different than baseball. I feel like, I mean, I used to play baseball back in the day, mm -hmm. but I feel like, yeah, I mean, if you, if you're not prepared or you're in your own head and you're thinking mechanically, there's very limited chance to succeed because there's just all that extra thought going on to your head and you're not just going out there and playing because that's, I mean, at the end of the day, like you were talking about, like when you're a kid, and you just went out there and threw the ball. As yeah, and I think even up to high school, most people are talking something like, you go through high school and you're like, you know, I love this game, it's fun, it's, it's kind of tough to do with my friends, and you start to like it more and more, and then you get, there's like a period in there where you really love it, and then you're like, oh, you're gonna go play in college. And then you start thinking, I need to do this, the coach needs to see this mechanically. And it, like, instead of playing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you get yeah. to college and it's like, I talk about this all the time, it's like the coaches, that, that's how they feed their families. Yeah. That's how they pay their bills. Like at the end of the day, it's a job. Yeah. So there is pressure because they're going to put the best people out there that can to succeed. I mean, because that's, I mean, at the college level, I don't think most people even think about this. Like when they're coming as freshmen, and this is probably some advice is like the coach isn't trying to play favorites or anything like that. Like they're, they're that's their livelihood. They're, they are a coach. It's not like in high school when your gym teacher is teaching baseball hitting some ground ball one hit like it's this is like their job like coach cluck you know what i mean like that's his job coach mountain's his job but you the same thing like it's yeah they want to win it, it is their career as much as yes you guys want to win yeah that's the way if not more go. honestly yeah. like i think it's i think it's interesting because if you get in that mechanical mindset of i need to do this or i need to do that and improve i can be in the starting lineup it's like I just don't think it's gonna go well. I think you alluded to that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like, I mean, golf is so mechanical and just like, I mean, it's pretty similar to pitching. And it's just your well, I'm sure hitting own, as well. I don't hit anymore, but you're your own. You're on an island out there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. There's no one else that's gonna help you, especially when you're in the moment. And if your mind is in the clouds and you're not just trusting what you can do, there's not a whole lot of chance for you to go out there and start or whatever you want to do. I mean, you got to just go out there and give it your all. And I mean, for me in college, like you were saying, I got a little bit more technical and that's probably hurt me in a few spots. Mm. Um, Interesting. But I mean, that's something you got to learn how to kind of tune in and tune out. Uh, you know, if you're practicing and you have a few weeks off from a game or I don't have a tournament in a few weeks, maybe I'll go to the range, get a little bit technical, you know, try and figure a few things out. But then a week out, I don't, I don't want to think. Yeah, about, I just want to get that ball into the hole as quick as possible. Because I think if you start thinking, I can't like it, at some point the body's just going to take over. Yeah, I mean sometimes your mind gets in the way. Yeah, and I absolutely. think one thing, Juan, I, I do his name might come up at some point tonight, but Juan, you talking about is your body's nervous for a reason. Yeah, like because you're excited. If you're not nervous, if you're not, but once that you get going, I'm sure sometimes once you get the first you know, good shot of the day, you get the, and then you can just kind of settle in. You know what I mean? And I think that if you're thinking about mechanics, you don't really get a chance to let your body take over and trust your preparation. Yeah, for me, it's after that first tee shot. The second mm -hmm. I get that ball off the tee, it's like, all right, it's go time. Right. It's like, that first tee shot might've been great. It might've been horrible. Like I started this weekend, I just absolutely snap up one of those titties. <laughs> uh, not a great start, but you know, I'm like, all right, well, I'm not gonna do that again. I mean, I'm, I just hit, 50 balls at the range and I didn't even see a single ball like that. Mm -hmm. I was just nervous and now I'm in the process. Now mm, you're in the pro mm, that's what I'm gonna describe it. It's like before you start, you're not in the process. Yeah. You don't think about it. I would say analytically, like you're nervous if this feelings get the way. It's natural. Like I for everyone, I think, you know, the great people in sports can kind of go about without getting nervous or because I, I do have that feeling of like, it's similar to the range, like the bullpen, like, you know, you're just dotting your spot, then a hitter gets in the, the box and you're just like trying to be a little too cute. Yeah. Cute, exactly. I'm sure that happens. I don't know if that's a term that's used, being too cute and golf. Oh, says, okay. <laughs> and like, I don't know, I just feel like we almost prevent ourselves from letting our bodies do what they gotta do. So. Yeah, absolutely, hmm. absolutely. Interesting discussion. I, I thank you for your answer. And, my next question, I'm going to throw some at you that we've added, um, and I look forward to hearing your answers. What is something in your life that you were proud of? Oof. Man, that's a tough one just to throw someone on the spot. It's hey, listen, so, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk for a second about this question. 
Um, and I've said before on here, I think it's hard to reflect, but I think everyone should ask itself the question if you listen. And I'll, I'll give you some time to think, I'll talk about this for a sec. And like, because sitting here, like if someone were to ask me this question, obviously I have time to think about it because I wrote the question. And you know, I, I have reflected like, what, what am I really proud of in my life? Is there anything worth being proud of? And I have to, I think it's something, and I, for me, I feel like there is. And I, I think about those things. And, but I think talking to people on the spot and that kind of reaction, like everyone kind of looks up and looks away and smiles and says like, you know, is what what is that thing for me? And I think every day you should try to give yourself credit for something you're proud of. You're proud of you handle a situation, relationship, friendship, whatever, like sport, school. Like you're proud of the way you handle something that day like I think that is very important to give yourself credit because if you go through life thinking you're making no headway like there's often times you don't get recognized but even if you show up I think one of the most important things in life is just showing up so as much as you can it's so cliche to give yourself credit try to tell yourself one thing you're proud of every day try to do something you're proud of every day I like that I like that a lot mm -hmm. I mean I feel like not enough people do that either I mean I'm probably culprit number one and you're, you're very hard on yourself and so am i and i think that like i think almost we we, we I don't why i made the question what it is not like what are you good at like that's i think that's you get some ego people might think that is bragging but what you're proud of is like up to you yeah. like what it what it, being proud of something is not something that other people care about. What yeah. you're proud of is only you're proud of it. And other people might be proud of the same thing in their lives, but it's unique to you. Like if I'm proud of my academic journey here, and if that was my answer, um, it would be different if you said that. It would be so different. Yeah, absolutely. So with all that said, you have an answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm proud of a lot, to be quite honest with you. I mean, now that you keep sure we're talking about it. Angelo, Angelo had a great line. He said, I say that proudly. When I, he said, I'm proud of a lot, and I say that proudly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would say I'm proud. I'm proud that I stayed true to myself. I mean, mm. no matter the situation or like just have been myself, you know, I mean, uh, there have been a lot of situations where people maybe try and, you know, not corrupt you, but kind of change up uh, the way you look at life or, I mean, it's always good to, you know, kind of get a different perspective, but I've always stayed true to myself and the way I act and carry myself. And I feel like that's something to definitely be proud of. Uh, I mean, it could be, I mean, on the golf course, it could be in the classroom. I feel like I'm the same person. I don't really, yeah. I don't really change up too much. All that and the, and the slides and the, <laughs> and the beanie, there you go. <laughs> I'm not trying to impress too many people. People might not love the way I carry myself, but you know, I'm, I'm at least proud of Mm. the way I carry myself 99% of the time. I mean, there's there's a few <laughs> hiccups here and there. Everyone has hiccups. But, yeah, I mean, it's just... If if you don't like the way... You, if you don't like yourself, you know what I mean? You're, you're not going to really make it too far. So I'm definitely proud in just the way, you know, I mean, I interact with people and I feel like I, I stay true, you know, to my own values. Mm. Wow, great answer. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Get deep. We are, hey, you know, it's your last time on the show. You know, we got to get deep, man. That's what this one's deep. Now, a couple people have needed some time to think about this, so we can come back to it if you need. But I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. If there was a book or movie about your life, what would the title be? Um, your five side guys gave some great answers. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> Bryce and uh, Swedish and Marco, they all give great answers. Hunter. Uh, it's probably going to sound a little cocky. No, uh, go for it. I don't know, when. I, I don't, like. When, period? Period. Yeah, it's also my Instagram bio. It hasn't changed since, like, sixth grade. Yeah, see money. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, win at everything, or at least try and win at everything you're going to do. Don't, don't. Half acid. Sorry if you can't say that word on on air, but uh, she'll ask him on. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, if you're not, if you don't have intention of, of walking into everything mm -hmm. with a winning attitude and with winning intention, um, I mean, it could be anything from academics to to sports. Uh, if if you don't go in and think that you're gonna succeed, 
then there's really no point in you being there because mm. you're probably not going to succeed. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get deep on you a little bit. I think one of the biggest victories we have to have every day is over ourselves. To win the battle against yourself. And I was talking about this with someone today. Power of showing up. Like if we win the battle to show up to class, to go to our sporting event, go to go to our practice. Because sometimes like I'll be like, it's just like, man, it's just some warm bed and like I wanna, you know, or like I'm getting back late after there's a six hour practice. But like if you win that battle, say, let me go and have a good effort today. Let me go. Let me just put myself in the position. Cause if you show up, you give yourself a chance. Like sometimes for me, like one thing I, I've tried to tro- concentrate on this year, I think it's kind of talking about before the show, you, you kind of know me personally. It was, it was not the best time last year. And for me, my mindset coming in was, I'm just going to try and show up to every show with the best preparation I can. Then I give myself a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't show up. I don't give myself a chance. Well, yeah, I think maybe win might not be the correct word. No, no, no. And I, I think before, but I, yeah. No, I, I think, exactly. but I think, I think, but I feel like at least when you said win, like that's the interpretation I come to. And I feel like what you've talked about so much is like being just like, that's all a battle about, you know, when you win the battle of your suffering, day, you stay true to yourself. You don't get tempted. Yeah. You finish your goals. So I think like, winning in that sense and i think that's what you're kind of going for a yeah, little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. now also like obviously like don't get me wrong the winning is dope like winning titles and things like that but like i feel like that starts with winning the battle over yourself each yeah day. that's what i'm kind of trying to get i mean it, it you gotta it, you gotta win the small battles first before exactly you and like one thing i thought about when i got back this summer i was talking about all this like I, I miss you and wags and juan and kiki and piper katie all these people and like I was just like, um, you know, I, 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 like we had all these great moments here at the end, all these fun shows, the conference title. And then I watched this YouTube video, I forgot who it was by, but it was just like, and I thought about it. And like, life is not always the big moments. Mm-hmm. Like those, those big fun shows, I have pictures in my room, like I always remember them. But like, the little fun, the, a good life is a good day. A bunch of good days put together. If you can put a bunch of good days together in your life, have small victories, like you have a good day, you get after it. You're not always going to be in the championship game. It's not always the exciting big show. It's not always, like sometimes it's, it's doing the research, it's putting the time, it's developing the questions, it's learning. So I, I think for me, that's one thing I think about too is winning is just winning every day and Realize that a good life is lived in the in-between moments. It's not just the big things. Because I'm sure you can remember, like, big moments you've had here, like, but also the small moments. So I think about the, the big moments of, like, when I first met y'all and, like, all the fun times that we had, and, you know. But I also think about, like, the times at Five Sign, like, we would go and watch the NBA and, like, all those things, too. So I think just winning every day is important. Yeah, and it's all about perspective. I mean, perspective is a huge thing. Uh People, I mean, I, I'm definitely a culprit of this too. I mean, you have a crummy day, but when you look back on it, I mean, you had some great moments. And mm. why, why do you categorize that day as a crummy day? And uh, when you look back, you had some awesome moments. And why aren't you focusing on even, you know, it could be a few seconds, but why isn't that the highlight? And why is the other, you know, 23 hours? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's it's like definitely that. human nature, but I feel like also. Once you, as I've gotten older, I think in the dark times, those happy moments seem even better. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think mean, it makes you yeah, cherish it a little bit better. I agree. And I think I'll just leave that at that because I think that's something that everyone can keep in mind. Sometimes in the darkest times, it's really just going to make those happy moments that I wear. So I appreciate that. So, and I think I could say a lot about that, but I'll leave that there for now. Now, my next question for you is. Do you have any regrets? And if so, why? Um it's really fine to say no. No, I don't I don't feel like I have any regrets. Uh I mean again, kind of going back to what I said a few answers ago, I, I try and stay as true to myself as possible. Mm. So if I'm if I'm doing that the correct way, I really shouldn't regret much of what I do or any of the decisions I make. Um like obviously in the moment you might regret something, but when you look back on it, uh, it, it could be good in the long run. Yeah, and I, I asked you kind of a similar question last time you were on, and we've talked about it a lot, and I think 
to Marion. I don't know if you know him. He's a counselor here at the school, a former basketball player, D1. And he was on here, and I, I asked him this question. I, I've had this question for a long time. I, it was like, if you can give advice, the first day you walked into college, da, da, da. I asked you guys kind of something similar when you guys came on last time. But he said, I wouldn't tell that person anything because that person's supposed to go through the lessons. And if I had the advice, I wouldn't go through them in the same way. Like the regret, like sometimes I'm like, ah, I wish I had this mindset. Like, I, I wish I would have known this person. I wish I would have, like, you know, got to not have these hard times and got to do something fun instead of going through that. Like, the thing is, like, if I knew the advice to get through those situations, I wouldn't have got what I needed from those situations. Because you have to live it, you have to experience it. That's where you get yeah, stuff from. And it makes those, like we were saying, those those tiny little moments even sweeter. Because if, if life is all sunshine and dandelions, <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't really know what awesome is. I mean, everything, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's all about perspective. And if you're out there trying your best and, you know, trying to live with no regrets and being true to yourself, there really shouldn't be a whole lot that you look back on and shake your head at. Mm. Wow, I, I love these answers, Colin. And one more kind of deep question before we get to some fun stuff. What are your hopes for the next chapter of your life? Because I know some of the like literal plans maybe are a little up in the air with where you want to go and put into your cue card. We're talking about that before the show, but what do you hope to get out of this next chapter of your life? To pull the Katie Hall and Juan metaphor of a book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know necessarily what I'm looking for or to get out of the next chapter of my life. Do you, are you hoping for anything in the next chapter? Uh, I, I'm just hoping to, you know, find something that I really enjoy doing mm -hmm. and uh, kind of continuing that passion. Well, hopefully you can stay with golf. Yeah, that's hopefully the Is goal. graduate school off the table playing golf? Or uh, something? I mean, it, it could be an option, but at this point, I'm... I'm kind of done with schooling. Uh, kind of been through. Say, like, brother. <laughs> uh, not that I don't love some. Of, like, I'm sure you've had like the fun classes, but like, it's just the idea of like sitting down in a room and just being like lectured to all day is kind of. Yeah, I mean, then there's school work, and I mean, it just. It, but I think in a job, people are like, oh, well, you have work in a job, but in a job, you're, you're getting paid for that work. Yeah, well, I mean, in a way, you're kind well, of. Obviously, you're getting lectured in a job, but you're getting paid to be. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're paying to be here, so it's kind of it kind of has similar. You know, it's kind of the same thing almost. Mm, but but it, okay, yeah. At the Makes same sense. time, it's just like I, I want to do my own thing. You know what I mean? I kind of want to adventure off on my own path. Yeah. Uh, I don't always want to be told what to do. Um, I kind of want to, you know, make a few mistakes, you know, or regrets, and kind of look back and be like. Hey, you know, that made me a better person. Mm. Wow. That's awesome, man. Thank you for that segment. I really enjoyed that a lot. And we're going to do your trivia question now. See if you can go out with a win tonight. You do. It's coming. They'll get to some fun stuff after the break. We're going to listen to some Garth Brooks, the dance. But let's go ahead and read that question. Remember, you'll have time to think about it during the break. So, got a fun one for you tonight. At what famous golf course was the first standardized mini golf course open? in 1916. Is it A, St. Andrews, B, Augusta, C, Pinehorse, or D, Tory Pines? We'll get your answer after the break. This is the present tense with Sam Stewart. I'm going to put some of them. WNJR Washington and online at WNJR.org. Any ideas? <laughs> what it is? To be honest with you, it feels like I'm doing a project literally on that exact it's like no you're not yeah so they open this mini golf course for women and my whole capstone is like on perspective of like women's golf and how they like segregate it in St. Andrews yeah yeah I mean I'm a golf mind I, I get way too deep into it I, hopefully it's St. Andrews or else my project's not very good <laughs> uh Good stuff, right? Good one. As an Oklahoma State guy, too. Go Pokes. Man, 
man, time flies. It does go by fast. Man, mm-hmm. time flies when you're having fun. At least I'll be 100% on your questions, though. You're 100%? Looks good. looks good on my resume. Did you did you get the other ones right? I don't know if I did. I didn't get Sometimes I'll go back and listen to them, but I was just like, I want to ask him. Because, like, I didn't want to, like, I was like, did you get them or not? I was like, ah, it doesn't want Because sometimes I'll, like, say if it's been, like, but you've been on three times, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely... You get, I can tell you get into it first, you're like kind of just getting into it, and then when you get into it, it's, yeah. I mean, I, I, passes by like that. It does, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, bro, like, I'll tell you, like, I mean, whatever dark times, or, I mean, this was like the hour, of, like, it's, it's like, this is like my safe space, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like, and I was just, I don't know why this hit me this weekend, but like, like the variety of conversations of people who've sat in that, it's just so... We're talking about the ins and outs of run blocking, then we're talking about NBA, then we're talking about philosophy and like sports. Like it, it's just so it's been so much like knowledge. I've just been so blessed to be able to hear all of it. You know what I mean? Because like it's you're talking about talk to people. You're you talking yeah. You're talking about the ins and outs of like golf and mental. But then like Thursday we're talking about the MLB playoff or the MLB you know season that's got in the way here. So and then like you know we talking about the WJ baseball playoffs like and it's. You just get lost in conversation, especially mm-hmm. when it's with good people. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot more you can ask for than talking with a good friend or that you mean to someone you can then call a friend after an hour, you know? Mm-hmm. It is, it is fun, man. It is fun. Maybe you come back and do like an alumni. I've always wanted to do an alumni episode with a golfer on a course, but I think Wags gets really busy with things. And... Yeah, she's she's crazy. I think she's trying to figure out a new apartment too. Uh, she's uh, like, okay. In oh, one, he's obviously busy too. Yeah. So you come back, you come I'll, visit me. I'll come back. When I'm coming next year. We'll do. Okay, we'll make it happen for sure. That'll be fun. Last last year, the president. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here I we go. Sure. And we are back on the present tense with Sam Stern on 91.10 FM at WNJR Washington online at WNJR.org. Today, we're talking with golfer and pack champion Colin Robinson. And before the break, we asked Colin his trivia question. And it is, what was the first standardized mini golf course that was opened in 1960? Was it St. Andrews, Augusta, Pinehurst, or Torrey Pines? And your answer is, sir. I believe it's St. Andrews. I'm sorry, that's incorrect, actually. So the interesting thing, I think you might be thinking about a 1912 edition of the Illustrated London News. And the article in the paper was a drawing for mini golf. Now, the first standardized course where this was actually built was in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Awesome. Yeah. But so technically, you're like, oh, I'm doing this as a research. So technically, you're not like wrong the idea of it. I think I might. I think it might be 1816. I just was so confident. Nah, you're good. Is there any, uh, here's oh. minigolf.com. Here we go. But, let's see. I just want to see if it has anything else. Introduced the Thistle Do as the first official standardized course. The Thistle Do used a mass production commercial approach to bring mini golf courses to masses. Thistle Do was a play on words from This Will Do, meant to reflect the concept that large scale golf courses are not accessible, and mini golf courses would do. Cool. I do love mini golf. I love mini golf too. Who doesn't? I have a question about that later, so hang on that thought. Now let's get some fun questions. Now I know your music tastes a little bit. We obviously listen to Garth Brooks, but if you had to listen to one musical artist for the rest of your life, who would it be? That's real tough. Uh, I'd go Leonard Skinner. Really? <laughs> yeah. The East Wing Suite in Home Alabama, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, they have, I just, they're just so deep. They have. Okay. I, I love the rhythm, and it's a little bit of a little bit of country, that bluesy, a little bit of, southern rock. Yeah, a little bit of rock and roll too. Oh, I just, I, that's a real tough one, too. I mean, um, maybe something else, like, like The it, Who it, it, or something like okay. that. The Who. But, no, I, I think I'd stick with Leonard Skinner. Sure. I mean, I, I probably listen to better albums on repeat oh, really? every month. So That's awesome. Now, my next question for you is, if I had you tickets to a front row seat at a concert, any artist, dead or live throughout history, what concert are you going to see? 
Men who are alive. And he artists. See, for this, I didn't take the answer to my own question. I said either Nirvana or Mac Miller. Because, yeah. like, yeah. Would you, you know what I mean? Like, you're not yeah. a fan of that. Ooh, um. But you think, like, a rapper who's like, yeah, someone said Lil Wayne in his prime. Yeah, all right, I'll go with that. Then. I'll go with uh, Kanye West in his prime. Not so much anymore. Before the anti Semitism. Yeah, one. before he kind of fell off the deep end. But, uh, no, because I, I like, graduated. This is the thing. Me and my mom were talking about this. It's like, it's because. I feel like, like, I mean, we can't really get into it, but like, we're talking about, like, we, everyone was so influenced by Kanye in this era musically, and like, I feel like, um, just the conversation some people have had, like, they've been influenced musically by Kanye, I hear that they enjoy his music, but like, it's just, it's a shame that some of the stuff, because like, even when you watch his concerts when he's building the beat for like, um, um, uh, I'm, why am I blanking on the song, um, on, uh, Runaway, Runaway on um, uh, by Dark Twisted Fantasy. Like when he's building that beat on stage, like it's he unbelievable. Be, and also at his concerts now, which I don't even know if he's going to do any concerts anymore. He doesn't play old songs. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think. Let's, so what? Yeah. What era would you say? Like my yeah, it's graduation. Like graduation. I would say my Dark Twisted, my beautiful Dark Twisted, Twisted Fantasy. Fantasy. I mean that's just that. That album is on. I think it's the best. It, it probably is. I don't know, it's just like, I mean, also Don does a little Chicago, too experiment. So. A Follow God was like... Yeah, yeah, I'm not... Yeah, I, when I listen to Kanye, I go back and listen oh, to the yeah. classics. Don I'm not really... Graduation. Really too into the new stuff. Uh, I mean, there's some new ones that pop. Well, his... But, or his newer, I should say. His, like... I think his style really changed. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, from, like, Jesus and even, like, um... Yay, like... I well, th I think those are, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I, he kind of formed rap. I mean, he'd come out with an album, and then that would be like what rap and hip hop was for the next. Right, year. and then you and have so like so, so you have like eight oh eight and heartbreak, late registration, watch the throne, watch the throne. That would be awesome. Jay Z. Yeah, no, I heard they were gonna make it too before all this kind of stuff off the stage. So then you kind of have that era, the college dropout, really solid album, like. Later in and then you have the life of Pablo that comes out after Jesus, and that's like the new era. Which I like the life of Pablo. Yeah, I like it. It's not. You know, and then you have like Yay and Donda. It's like yeah, that's more experimental type hip hop. Like all I can think of is the first song, Donda, Donda, Donda. Well, usually that's his mom's heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just like it's very like, experimental. Like to yeah. me, that's experimental. It's something you hear like on a Tyler Creator album, like that sort of experimental, metaphorical sound. And some, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. If it's your cup of tea, it's. Because well, I'm not a huge, huge I'm not a huge Tyler the Creator fan, are you? Not huge. I mean, are you, you I like, feel like, like I like his like uh, like comedy and like TV oh, shows. Oh, he's hilarious. Like, like, music. On Adult Swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, so do you like any of those Chicago rappers like Juice World, Polo G? Yeah, I mean, I I like. Uh, yeah, I mean. I'm not huge. I'm not I huge in a little darker King Von. I never really got into that. Yeah, I mean, I I'll listen to them. All my friends back home like to listen to them. I like Polo G a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, they're. I never really got into Juice too much. Yeah, I I was never a huge Juice guy. Um, I don't know. Like, again, they all make great songs, but it's so hard to keep up with music, especially when everyone's releasing all these singles and yeah. EPs. There's such like a. I feel like that's it's such a flood of like. It's bad music. Exactly. It's so rewarding. Like, let's be honest, y'all. Like, Jack Harlow, the kid, like, most of his songs are mid. They horrible. Didn't... I would... You can go, okay. I, I, I don't want to be no disrespect. I mean, I don't think it's horrible, but I, I feel like his songs are pretty... Like, some of his songs... Some of his songs are pretty bad. But you yeah, like, Churchill Downs, and, like... It comes on, I go, like, please skip. Like, Glamorous. Like, that's obviously, like, a club song. Like, he makes club bangers, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Fun. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. But I mean, then, like, just, like, most of his songs... Like, really, he's a mid-rapper. Let's just be honest. I wouldn't even call like if I'm trying to listen to rap that is, is that's for sure. Like you throw a Jack Harlow album, like no, nah. no, you're skipping ninety nine percent of the songs. songs. Yeah. But like the songs are bangers, and they're like mainstream. Like, to people say it's an industry plan. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't even know. I guess like the industry like put it in there. I don't know. Because if you think about all these like main, like if you go like go listen to like. Uh, the kids that come home, the kids miss you. Like, except like Churchill Downs and like Glamorous, like or First Class. Like, it's it's a little rough, but I feel like it goes with the idea of like 
They just sound like mid music on their day. Yeah, it's just like, cause it you like feel the pressure and stuff at a wall. Drop so much. Like that's why I like uh Kendrick and J. Cole is because they wait to drop. They're not dropping every five seconds. And that's why they're icons. And exactly and that, that thing about like if we if you would have said like whenever someone says J. Cole Kendrick, like I'm like, uh, you know what I mean, um, untitled, unmastered, damn. Um Section A, you know what I mean? Like all like that's he's only has a few damn, you know what I mean? Like he only has a few albums, miss him around the big like and then like you listen to because he hasn't dropped a while, you go listen to Mr. Rouse Big Steppers. Like someone's dropping a mixtape and like a sixty song EP and it's like I feel like that's how Eminem used to be when he first came out. Like but then he started dropping like to me now, bro, like Eminem was just like he's just an old man punching air. You know what I mean? Like Oh yeah, I, I don't even to be honest with you, I didn't even know he released new music. Yeah, music to be murdered <laughs> by it's 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 not great. I feel like it's 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 kind of time for another I'll time. I listen to the stuff that I listened to when I was like twelve. Yeah, so like games. Yeah, like lose uh, yourself. We lose yourself from the soundtrack from Eight Mile. That was like released in what two thousand one. That's yeah. hilarious. You ever listen to D twelve? No, no, no. I checked the profile of that. That was his group he was with. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. My next question for you is: If you're at a DJ at a party at Five Side, and someone hands you the ox. You have five seconds to put on a banger song for a party. What song would you play? Uh, I mean, kind of a weird one. <laughs> but, uh, Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. That's a, see, that's like people try to get too deep. Like, everyone awesome. knows that song. It's a good beat. Everyone's screaming at the top of their lungs, yeah. and it kind of like, goes to, hard. To I be mean, a good party song, it has to have a good beat. It has to, people have to know the words. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want everyone to get into it. I don't want, like, some some music where half the people are singing. I want everyone to be screaming. <sighs> Originally, I said Elm Street by Jimmy Wapo. Have you heard that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Freestyle by Lil Baby. But I feel yeah. like you don't listen to rap, you're not going to know. It's like, like, a pop song, I feel like Wild Ones by Flo Rida. Yeah, I mean anything Flo Rida to be Flo honest with you at a like whistle, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> That's like random, but I'm trying to think, like I, I got some country people who are uh are uh, they're country fans and like you know, you go to the pub, they send the light always comes on. Yeah, That's like yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like no, I'll do it in other words to that song. Like, it's more of like a Yeah, I feel like everyone knows the words to that song. <sighs> Especially Hit I mean, me up on Instagram, let me know if you know the words to Dixie Land like. We're close enough to West Virginia that I feel like that's is that not like their song kind of? That's Alabama's song. Yeah, but like Take Me Home everyone, Co- Take Me Home Country Road. That's everyone, West Virginia's you know, song. But like they'll still sing it around. I'm sure that like But it's I feel like it's just more like a country song. You maybe know? you're right. Maybe. But I feel like right. there's a lot of other people from country regions. Because it's Alabama, so like Dixieland. Yeah. Dixieland is Alabama. Also, can we talk about how many apparently Alabama fans are on W and J's campus? Every right, time it's that a big song t- comes on, you hear like the second verse and I'm like Yeah, yeah well, I never, sometimes, like, I'll say the first bar, it's, it's like, you know, spend my dollar on beer, like, you know what I mean, because people say that, but that's how they, yeah, then it's like, and, like, it's saying, like, basically F all the other teams. Yeah, I So it's like, yeah, I don't know, it, I don't think they're out of everything, I think that's just, like, the fun thing to say. Yeah, but, yeah, but like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I don't like Auburn, LSU, and Tennessee, so. I like them way better than Alabama, <laughs> <I'll tell you laughs> <that>. <laughs> I'll have, to tell you, like? I'll have to tell you a story about this song after we go up there. I'll tell you a story. So, final choice. Would you say Bad Romance? I like that. Yeah, I like that. I, like I feel like that's... Also, my friends back home are going to yeah. like that. I, 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 I have to tell you a funny story about Swedish. I don't know if you were listening when Swedish came on. I know, I was I'll have to tell you a funny story about this question but after we go up there. Now, my next question for you is, what is your favorite movie of all time and why? Ooh. Um, that's a another talk. I mean, I I kind of been off the movie grind since I got to college, but I go Shawshank Redemption. Great one. Um, yeah, I mean that's just an absolute killer movie. I mean the, the ups and downs to that movie. I mean it's just it's quite honestly the most perfect movie ever created. Um, I don't even feel like I can argue. I mean it is a very well crafted movie, I would say, and I think Tim Robbins, great actor, also in um, Bull Durham, Jacob's Ladder. He's so good in Jacob's Ladder. It's really yeah, and I mean, well, it's just the whole cast and the yeah. story, and I don't know. It just feels like you sit down, and it feels like you sat down for an hour, and then all of a sudden you look, and you're like, oh, this was almost a three-hour movie, and then at the end you're like, so good. almost crying, so and it's good. it's just yeah. I mean, that's if I have to 
anytime I hear that no one's watched that movie, or maybe Goodwill Hunting too. Oh, Goodwill Hunting is good. That's a real good one. Uh, oh, that's a little deeper though. Sebastian, you didn't ask me like, yeah, I like that. Dead Poet Society, along the, I like yeah, Dead Poet yeah. Society. Yeah, I mean, those are just classics. I love, I love them apples. You All know right. I mean? There you go. Nah, that's, yeah. You made me go watch the movie. I gotta rewatch um, the one thing. And Shawshank Redemption, so good. Morgan Freeman, did you see, have you seen Seven? Yeah. Oh, that's oh it's so Heck good. Of a movie. Heck of a movie. Well, that's the thing, is like, I can't, like, I should go back and watch those movies, but I just don't know what's coming out, and it feels like nothing relevant is You really see Avatar? Out. I really got into Avatar. I, yeah, the first one's all. I haven't seen the second one. You should. One. I think you like is it. Is it good? It's good. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to. I'm also not a huge fan of going to the movie theaters I anymore. I Because here's the thing. The movie companies, in 3D. they put all these, like, commercial, like, things out on the, like, the before the movie that, like, we're going to be back in theater and theaters with, like, you know, I don't want to hear the dude talking behind me, the dude making out with a girl in front of me, and the dude eating popcorn. Like, I I don't want to have to wait for commercial. Like, I sit at home and lay on my couch five Instant. months later in the month. Yeah. 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 Instant. I can pause it and go to the bathroom. It's the best. And I feel like COVID's kind of ruined that for me. I mean, obviously, they start releasing movies on TV, and it's just like, all right, I'll just wait another yeah. four weeks, and it'll be out. On I agree. HBO I just don't, I don't get the appeal of home theater. That's all me. I mean, even it's like you're going with your friends, like, and it's also expensive. It's so expensive. And I'm, I ain't it's getting no snack. I ain't getting no snack in the theater. 20 bucks for a leg. Yeah, soda and <laughs> popcorn, 20 bucks, man. I mean, that's how they get you. They do. Yeah, I mean, it's like $12 to get in there. Probably more than that. I feel like it was $12 back in the day, so. Back in the day, like, you're 20. Pre COVID, that is true. After, like, COVID inflation, like, I'm sure it is more expensive. I haven't, I haven't been back in a long time. I haven't been. I guess I went to Avatar. I forgot what the ticket was. But anyway, yeah, I, I definitely get your point. Now, Colin, we better do a segment here, and I've got a couple fun ones for you tonight. It is our Would You Rather segment here on the present tense. Oh boy. So our first one tonight, I got, sorry, I got, these are funny. I got, they're not too serious, these tonight. Would you rather walk 18 holes in 40 degree weather with no shoes, or have to eat a, you have to take a cart in the second option, but you have to eat a G&T chicken wrap every two holes? Ooh, um, G and T's chicken wrap. I'm walking. I'm, not, I'm walking barefoot. I, uh, I can't. I don't golf if it's below fifty degrees, unless I'm literally forced to be out there. It's just so miserable at the wind and especially the the bipolar weather out here in Western Pennsylvania. You, it could be forty degrees and all of a sudden it's snowing. snowing or snowing. Yeah, it's you know, your face. That's a better explain. I'm gonna say, man, I don't think I could put down nine chicken wraps in a span of. Two hours. Yeah, it could be a bad day for the stomach, but you know, maybe I'll just go like chicken and cheese only. <laughs> chicken and cheese. And then uh, <laughs> go with that. I feel like I feel like it's doable. Might not be enjoyable, but definitely more enjoyable than walking 18. Oh, no, dude, foot. I ain't. No, I can't do it. Man. Doing a little frostbite. I can't do it. I'm so sick of chicken wraps. I mean, that's what I get every time I get out of here. It's like I, get, I work late here a lot, so like I'll get out of the show. Da, 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 pack up, upload the video, da, 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 da. check her out, check her out, Pat, you know. It's kind of a go to. I mean, it is go to. I'm a, I'm a big quesadilla type of guy. I like the patty melts. Patty melts good. Fire too. Patty melts good. Although I've had so many of them, like yeah. Also, I don't like waiting for five minutes. The buffalo chicken wraps out like that. Yeah, it is. I bet. So here's my theory. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've timed it out. To where, obviously, chicken fingers is first. Grilled cheese takes the longest. I'm pretty sure. For it's some easy. reason. Makes no sense. It's like the easiest thing to make. So you got quesadilla is the longest, I think. Are you sticking down there? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the <Yeah. terrible. laughs> it's the terrible. It's just, I just saw, so sick <laughs> I just saw you. I, I just saw your eye. Well, I was looking at your eyes. I just saw your eyes sink below where I could see. And I was like, what's I don't know what happened. I didn't press anything. <laughs> Too many of them chicken wraps. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man. No, that's funny. Second question. Something you alluded to earlier. Would you rather go on a date that's a mini golf mini golf date or a top golf date? So I have a lot of angles. True. I uh, I'd probably go mini golf because I'm just not like top golf. I get way too competitive because it's actually like somewhat golf, and then all of a sudden I'm like. Oh, it's I'm more like to... a nightclub though. A lot of people don't go there to golf, but like, they kind of just go there to mess around. I feel like. Yeah, but, but there's some people that go. Not me. I'm uh, out there. I'm out there 
hacking at it, trying to hit it as far as possible, score the most points. And mini golf, it might be a surprise, but I'm not very good at mini golf. It, yeah. I can't see the angles or bounce it off the wall. I don't know. So I really I think it's just that's surprising that you're not good at mini golf. Yeah, oh. interesting. I'm gonna say this. One, my golf swing looks terrible. So that's although comedy on like a day. I don't know. Depending on where I'm at in the relationship. If I'm trying to wow someone, maybe we'll go to Top Golf, and then everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my goodness!" Yeah. Wags probably gets crazy when you hit it off the back net. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling tonight, Wags. Um, yeah, I'd probably say mini golf just because I feel like I'm somewhat confident in that. You've never really seen my golf swing. We've talked a lot of golf, but it's bad. We should go. Well, we'll go mini golf. <laughs> <laughs> Although they don't have a place around here. I know, they just close. They have that puttery up. place. That place is expensive, dude. I looked it up. You know puttery? It's a bar where you play mini golf inside. I've got that's cool. Pretty, yeah. I think it seems kind of cool. But I don't I'm know. Have to check it out. Yeah, we might, we, might have, we might have to do that. Next question for you. If you had fifty thousand dollars to start a business, what type of business would you start? I have an idea, but I'm not going to share it because I don't want anyone to take it. Okay, um, you tell me after the show. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, <laughs> yeah, definitely something. <laughs> it's okay. Something golf related. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I mean, maybe sports nutrition, something like that. Right. I don't know. That's who knows. Who knows? Well, it's your money. You can do what people want. Yeah. Maybe just pocket. <laughs> That's not the question. <laughs> That's cool. I did want to. We have watched some NBA before together. Are, are you pulling for anyone particular in these playoffs? Or listen, I, I I think this is one of the most exciting playoffs in a long time. Yeah, that's been really good. I've actually tuned in. My bowls are out. Yes, it's tough. First going down with long. Long time going down was tough. Yeah, I mean, the doctors in Chicago are atrocious. I don't know what. Derrick Rose. I mean, it's it's some of the guards in Chicago. So there needs to be an investigation on that as soon as possible. But um, yeah, I, I like uh, not. I, I would say I'm rooting more against teams than for teams. So who are you rooting against? Uh, not a big LeBron fan. Me either. Would love to see them lose. All right. So what's your opinion on Dylan Brooks? I think he's a clown. Yeah, I mean he's a clown, but also so here, so check this. Check this. Some... I'll like say I'll, I'll show the camera this. I saved this on Twitter because I, you know, I said bookmark this stat. This is a quote from Dylan Brooks before Game Two, after Game Two, after the win. I poke bears. I don't disrespect no one until they come for me and give me forty. And then he says uh, after LeBron gave him twenty points and twenty rebounds, which is still forty. He said I'm out after yeah. Game Four. He didn't want to talk. Well, I mean, so, but I, I'm fine I in the West agree and all that this. LeBron's washed, or at least starting to get there. Um, I mean, I, I don't like I mean, here's the thing. I feel like what Polenka did the trade deadline for the Lakers is unbelievable. He should win GM of the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were awful. Yeah. Russell yeah. Westbrook, Pat Bev, and Bryant, Thomas Bryant. Like, now you got Jared Vanderbilt, Rui Hachimura, D'Lo. Like, that's a solid lineup. Yeah, it's I mean, it's the floor for Reeves. A championship, but uh, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's I mean, the Grizzlies came close to winning. How do you let LeBron get to the rim on a game-winning possession? How do you not like triple team him? You know he's one of the best drivers of all time. You have to make him shoot. It's a it's a really valid question. It's a defensive also, rate. Why I don't like watching NBA basketball as much as I like watching NCAA basketball because it's almost like. They're like, all right, yeah, just go for it. Like, you're the best but that's, player. Do it. I mean, here, oh my God, it's it's super. I just don't know. I uh, okay. So here's the thing. I will say, LeBron, first twenty point player or twenty point twenty rebound game in the playoffs for the Lakers since Shaquille in two thousand four. Like, I think he's playing with more confidence because the team is better around him. But regardless, I'll just say it again. I I, I just can't go to the back. How do you let it? it well, you need one stop. And you let the best player take the ball straight to the rim. After, and then in overtime, Dylan Brooks like, I make LeBron go left. He makes him go left, and he doesn't get a stop. Yeah. It's an and one. What a clown. I mean, the Grizzlies it's, it's, just. It's mind-boggling. It really is. Honest with you. It really is. The, the Grizzlies, they are. I mean, make so many things else. about them this season between their point guard and Dylan Brooks. Yeah. And just. What a season for the Grizzlies. Also, Jimmy Buckets. I would say that's. Let's talk probably, about Yeah, let's talk about Jimmy probably, the team that's I'm their series for, especially 
not a huge Bucks fan. I have a few Bucks uh, friends. Yeah, I'm sure. So I, uh, I mean, I like to root against I mean, him a little here's bit. Here's the thing. Eric Spolster is a very good coach. I don't yeah. think he gives enough credit. No. After, he brought, got brought in the LeBron era. But he, he is, I mean, they went to the finals. Like, he has done a lot with not, uh, I would say the superstar era is kind of dead in the NBA. But like, let's just get super. They, he's worked the team really well. Duncan Robinson has started to shoot the ball really well again in this playoffs. Jimmy Butler, I mean, I think you got to put him up there with Alonzo Mourning and Dwayne Wade as great as he plays over. Yeah. Got you've, got, you've got to put him up there. He's an absolute stud. He's uh, I mean. So here's the thing. Think about this. Minnesota, he get he, he like bullies Carl Anthony Towns. He doesn't want to be pushed too hard, Carl Anthony Towns. Which, which talk about teams a mess, the Timberwolves. You know what I mean? He's yeah, like absolute mess. The absolute mess at the end of the season for them. Oh, and they're about to get dropped off as well. I mean, Anthony Edwards is having a great shot last night. I'll, I'll have a stat about him in a sec. But so the 76ers keep Tobias Harris over Jimmy Butler. And the Heat, if you're those teams, you're like, what? Why? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it seemed to work out for the Sixers a little bit. Uh, dude, they haven't, they haven't done anything. They're playing pretty well right They're now. playing right But, dude, I feel like they just find a way to lose at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, you're probably not wrong. That just seems like Although, East is up. Although, I say the Celtics, like, they, they seem motivated right now. Yeah. I mean, obviously. The, well, and I feel like it's one of the first years where it's like, who... Who's gonna win? I mean, it's it's legitimately a toss up. Which before it's been like, all right, well, Warriors, Warriors in the finals. Who's gonna play them? And it's two teams. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, well, it's not even gonna be an interesting finals either way. So I feel like this year it's finally like, all right, let's let's tune in. Yeah. There's actually some basketball being played instead of. It's an exciting time. Yeah, it's an exciting time. I mean, and Jimmy Butler, fifty six points in a fifteen the fifteen point comeback against the Bucks in Game Four. Most points in a 15 point comeback win since Michael Jordan, game three, 1992, first round versus the Heat. Jordan also had 56 points, interestingly enough. And listen, I, I, I feel like Jimmy Butler, he's one of the most clutch players of all time. Yeah. Although he did miss that shot against the Celtics last year, like, that the day, you want the ball in this guy's hands. Yeah, yeah he, uh, there's not a whole lot of other people you'd rather have on your team with the game on the line than Jimmy Buckets. Uh, I agree. I mean, on mm-hmm. Steph. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's a few, but yeah, I mean he he's he just has a dog in him too. Yeah, he really he does. Just, he seems like a funny guy. They said after the victory one time in the season, he was like seeing Nickelback in the locker. Like he's a huge Nickelback fan. Yeah, he just seems like and like that Bud Light commercial where he's singing um um where he's singing like Time on the Plane with the Nickelodeon Ultra. It's, it's just not Bud Light, uh, Nickelodeon Ultra. And he's singing it on the plane. Like it's just he just seems like a fun guy. Yeah, and some I don't. They could be completely untrue, but I feel like. His play on the court doesn't affect his life off the court. No, he's a genuinely nice guy. It's Any, something that every a person in every single sport should learn how to do. That. I mean, you might have a bad game, but don't let that affect your personality. He just seems yeah, like he's a, a good great player. guy. Yeah. And, I mean, just an absolute stud. So, rooting for him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Now, my pick out of the East gives the Celtics, and here's why. If Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are both healthy, they're 22-1. and one. That's a 9.57 playoff win percentage. Pretty hard to argue against. I mean, it, it, but like, I have a serious question about the Bucks. If if Joel and B can stay healthy, I have serious questions about that. Yeah. That's you know, if he if he's like possibly out, this knee is aggravating him. I think the Knicks. I mean, as much as Jalen Brunson, like Jalen Brunson does drop to a nine, which in my opinion is why the Mavs sucked because they replaced Jalen Brunson. He's a very solid reliable defensive player with Kyrie. Yeah. Luke can't play defense. Kyrie can't play defense. Yeah, that was that was a whole Which is exactly my point about the superstar stuff. era is dead. Like Yeah, I mean you still need a superstar, right? I'm talking about like the, the super team era, yeah. I think would be the, like you can't just throw people together. Like look at the teams who like the Bucks and the Suns have been in the finals in recent years, the Heat. But like, like those teams were very well rounded, I would say. It's not just like Miami where it's like you had I mean, even on those teams, you had role guys, but, like, it wasn't as deep. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. I mean, they had, they had some great role guys. And look at the Celtics. Like, you had uh, great guys. Chalmers. Yeah. Like, absolute beast. I mean, you had role guys stepping up for the Celtics last year, but, yeah, I think the depth is definitely a big part of the – that's why the Suns might struggle. Yeah. Because they're not deep. They got rid of everyone for KD. So. Well, that's the, that's the fun part is, like, I mean, it, it's kind of – 
the battle of the superstars versus you know yeah kind of more of a and we'll see the thing is though like the Clippers do have superstars and they've only been losing by a little bit in these games like if you had Kawhi and Paul George up there and they said Paul George would be back Kawhi it's you know it's who knows I, it doesn't play out. like Skip Bayless was saying it was a bad investment I mean like I don't say if it's a bad investment but like you definitely haven't like seen that pair on the court for a long time together at yeah. any given point during this yeah time. I mean I used to love Kawhi but it's just like it's it's hard to like someone who just doesn't seem to want to be there I mean he just doesn't want to really takes a lot of love management like here's the thing like in the bubble when Paul George and um Kawhi Leonard were playing together like it was it was fun to watch yeah. but they have just haven't been on the court a lot together and Ty Lue is a very good coach I mean very good coach I mean the last thing I want to talk about is I do like Anthony Edwards 129 points in the series against the Nuggets like I think he gets surrounded by a competent team and not people are trying to fight each other like <laughs> You know, and the guy's punching, Jason McDaniels, the guy's punching his hand on the wall. Like, I mean, I think he's going to be really solid. Yeah, it's, it's the, a superstar. Yeah, so we'll cool. see. I do want to ask you, do you think the Warriors and the Kings are going to win this series? 2-2 right now. We've got game at Sacramento. Game at, I think if, if Golden State wins game five, they'll win the series. Is De'Aaron Fox going to be able to He's going to gonna play. He said he's going to play. He said, I will be out there. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Love that. The fractured, Absolutely love that. With that fractured finger. It's Sacramento fan base is rowdy, though, too. I mean, if my team sucked for that long, I'd probably be pretty rowdy, too. Well, but like, they just play good. They just look but they're so, so good. good at home. Yeah. They're so, it's like a way. It's, it's so weird to have a professional sports team be this so so good at home, a championship contender at home. They look like a, a lottery team on the road at times. Like, you're not wrong. I'm I mean, right. although they did in game one, like Wiggins just had a shot. But then you say the same thing about Harrison Barnes. They yeah. had a shot. Still, well, I, he's still playing for the Warriors. I, I mean, I've tuned in, I think, for three of those games. Absolute heck of a series. Um, but, I mean, like, the Warriors would just get on a run. It's like, how how are they? How I mean, obviously, I'm wearing a courage. I hope, I mean, hope, I mean, to me, what I've been saying is the Kings kind of remind me of the young Warriors. They run the pace. They, they got playmakers. Like, the Warriors are older. You know, they got older guys. Like, I think you're going to need to see Poole, DiVincenzo, Moody. That's going to be a difference. Moody had a great game last couple games. Like, I'm sorry, two games ago. Like, I think yeah. this guy's got to step up. Yeah. But it's pretty tough when, I mean, you can guard the two best three point shooters and they'll still just pour in. Exactly. 40 to 90. Game six, Clay? Possibly. Uh, I, I imagine it'll happen. You have six clay. Like, and I think another thing is, too, my coach was talking about this. Like, Draymond getting suspended had to fire that team up. For sure. Because do you think that was worthy of suspension? He twisted his ankle. I think he twisted his ankle. If someone, if I lay on the ground right now and twist your ankle, you're going to kick me to get me off. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I I haven't loved a lot of the ejections. And like, I think the Dylan Brooks one, they had saw what he had said before the game. Because I feel like just swiping for the ball and actually think someone in the crotch, like that's basketball play. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. It I, happens. I just feel like. But then, like, LeBron, like, flops and, like, it's. He, they toss. Yeah. The well, he, he's. Now, like, and B crying. didn't even get ejected for. To me, that one where he kicks it out of the nuts. Like, that's. Did you see that one? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's there's a few that are warranted, but it also just, like, the, the Brooks, and uh, it just takes away from the game. I mean, you're not showing up. They're tuning in to watch these guys get booted, yeah. and you're sitting watching like, oh, what's going to happen for five minutes? I'm tuning in to watch them play basketball. Exactly. That's the. I mean, I like the challenge role, but like the the reviewing of the flagrant is just so, just slows the game down. Although I will say, if you think about it, you're in the NBA, what matchup do you want? Do you want Warriors Lakers? You want Grizzlies Kings? Oh, you, you know want Warriors Lakers? Lakers. You, know you want yeah, yeah. Yeah. So or even Lakers Grizz. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Lakers. I'm sorry, Grizzlies Warriors. So like, I don't know, think about those things too. When you think about all these ejections, you know, we'll see what happens. It's all rigged. And I don't think it's rigged, <laughs> but I think there's like, I mean, it's a conspiracy going around. But I mean, like, really, Adam Silver, I think his dream scenario would be out of those series, Lakers Warriors. Yeah, absolutely. Two historic I mean, franchises. Be, yeah, I mean, it's because as much as the Kings are getting popular, like, not as many people tune in for Kings Grizzlies as Lakers. No, Warriors. absolutely. Yeah, I so. mean, well. Again, I feel like there's so much hype around. I mean, even those four teams alone, that it probably yeah, we have, I mean, it's going to be a great series either way. But 
no one in their right mind is looking for James Cruz this year. Right, and that and the thing is, we haven't even really touched on it. I mean, we did, but like not a lot. That the heat of eight seed might be the one seed. You know what I mean? It's yeah. all. So we'll see what happens. You got KD on the sneak. So many storylines. It's fun. It's fun, man. I'm excited to keep watching. So, Colin, I really thank you for joining the show tonight. And I do have a quote of the day for us tonight, kind of going along some of the themes that we have for us tonight. And it's actually from Jordan Belfort, who was the Wolf of Wall Street. If you good, if you give people a good enough reason why, they will always figure out the how. Love it. So you gotta find your why. And we're talking about, I think that starts from within. Yeah. Start from within. So call it, man. We could get off happy and stuff, but I'm just gonna say this. Uh, you've been a great friend to me. I've always supported me on here doing this, and I really thank you for that. It's been a lot of fun, the times you came on, and I'll turn it to you. Is there anything else you wanna add? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I just wanna thank you for having me on as many times as you did. Uh, I love coming on, and this is an absolute blast seems like time flies when we're on here. Um, it does. I mean, it so, feels like the other day, I was just saying, like, that you won lag in the studio, and now you're leaving, too. It's weird thing about college, man. People leave, people come flies. in. Flies. It does fly. It's Gotta so enjoy it. But we'll... We're we'll gonna something up. Little, little love that episode. You'll be back. Maybe I can, wherever you're at next week, I can take a trip and see it. We'll just see what happens. So, man, once again, I just want to thank you for coming on. I appreciate it, man. All right, everyone, we've got a big episode Thursday night. We've got Kyle Jones, Ethan Boring, and Joey Lehner joining the show. Big baseball episode. We've got just five, count of five shows left this semester. Guys, it's been such a fun season of present tense, such a fun year. We've got some good memories still on the way. I know we're going to have a lot of fun these last five shows. Until Thursday night, everyone have a great night. We're to live in the present tense.